Hi, everybody. I just wanted to go over an example with a series parallel circuit on working backwards when you don't have all the values. Okay, so we'll just have an example here. We have five resistors. Um, and I've given you E, I gave you R1, VR1, I gave you VR4, I gave you IR5 and R5. And so what I've asked you here is to find R2, VR2, R4, and R3, all right? So what you shouldn't do is stress yourself into trying to solve this in one shot, all right? So what we're gonna try to do here, or what I wanna go over with you is just start calculating what you can, okay? So wherever we have two values, we can calculate the third. If we have V and I, we can calculate R. If we have V and R, we can calculate I. And um, if we have uh, I and R, we can calculate V, all right? So let's just look at the circuit. And right off the bat, I gave you VR1. Oh, and the, the, the thing here is just start calculating what you can and draw it out on your circuit as you're doing it and the answer will come. So I'll just give you an example here how to do this. So we have VR1 and we have R1. So that means we can find IR1, okay? So IR1 is going to equal VR1 over R1, which is going to be uh, 2.917 volts divided by one kilo ohm. And that's gonna give us 2.917 milliamps. Okay, so I'm just gonna draw that for you. Uh, so I'm gonna fill that in my circuit here. So we know that right there, IT is 2.917, well, get a little backwards there, 2.917 milliamps. Okay, because IR1 is also equal to IT. All right. So here you have 2.917 milliamps at that junction, all right? Now, we also have two values for R5. We have IR5 and R5, which means we can find VR5. So VR5 is equal to, um, is equal to IR5 times R5 which is 2.5 milliamps times 500 ohms, okay? So if we uh, calculate that out, it comes out to 1.25 volts, all right? So we have 2.5 milli times 500 ohms, okay? We have 1.25 volts. So let's write that there. So we're slowly getting this together, okay? So if we look around now, we also know that IR1 is IT, which means the current there is 2.917 milliamps, and that's going through R2. Milliamps. So that means that IR1 is also equal IR2. All right, so we know that. Now, if we use Kirchhoff's voltage law, well, let's do something a little simpler. Let's find this current here. Let's find that current there. So we know the current at that junction is 2.917 milliamps, and we know IR5 is 2.5 milliamps. So Kirchhoff's current law tells us that IR3 is equal to IT minus IR5, okay? So we haven't even, we haven't even tackled any of these yet. We are just filling in as many things as we can. Okay, we're just picking the low hanging fruit here to use uh, a North American cliche, but what we're doing is we are using or we are going after the easy calculations first. So 2.917 milliamps minus 
2.5 milliamps gives us um, 416 microamps. All right. So we have that here, 416 microamps there. Now, let's start looking at the circuit a little better. If we want to put Kirchhoff's voltage law to work for us, we have a loop around the outside. We have E, we have R1, R5, and R2. So we want to mark our polarities on this circuit. We will have... Um, Second here, let's mark our polarities. There. All right. So, if we want to use Kirchhoff's voltage law, we could say that E minus VR1 minus VR5 minus VR2 is equal to zero, which means that VR2 is equal to E minus VR1 minus VR5, okay? And that is going to be equal to 5.833 volts. There. So here we have 5.833 volts. So there, we've knocked off one of our requirements, okay? Now, we know the voltage across R2, and we know the current through R2, which tells us that R2, if we apply Ohm's law, R2 is equal to VR2, by IR2, which is um, 5.833 divided by 2.917 milliamps. And that's going to give us 2K. That's going to give us 2K. All right. So there, we just knocked off oh, another one of our requirements. Now, to calculate R4, we know the current through R4, and we know the voltage across R4, which means that R4 is going to be um, VR4 divided by IR4, which is, um, and we know IR3 and IR4 are the same. I should probably stress that over here, okay? So that's going to be 833.333 millivolts divided by 416 microamps. And if we do it in our calculator, remember to keep your units as they are. So it's 833.333 micro uh, millivolts divided by 416 microamps, okay? So we get 2.003K. All right. So we know R4 is 2.003 kilo ohms. So there, we figured R4. Now our last task is to figure out R3. So let's look at this loop again. If we apply Kirchhoff's voltage law to this loop, Okay, we can say that VR5, we can say that VR5 minus VR3 minus VR4 is equal to zero. So VR5 minus VR3 minus VR4 is equal to zero. Which tells us that VR3 is equal to VR5 minus VR4, okay? Which works out to 1.25 volts minus 833.333 millivolts 
which works out to 416.667 millivolts. I'm going crazier today. Okay. And if we do that on our calculator, we have 1.25 minus 833.333 milli. And that's what we get. Okay, 416.667 milli. Do not change the units. Work with the units that you have. So it's 416.667 millivolts. Okay, so we know the current through R3 and we know the voltage across R3, which is, now we could say that R3 is equal to uh, VR3 divided by IR3, okay? Which is uh, 416.667 millivolts divided by 416 microamps, which works out to 416.667 milli divided by 416 micro, 1.002K. Which if we we're putting the circuit together, it'd be 2K and 1K. All right, so now we're here. And we eventually got to all of our requirements for that question, all right? Now, again, the trick was work with what you have and just start chipping away at all of the, um, all of the quantities and your answer will eventually come to it. All right? I hope you found this helpful and we'll see you again soon.